I said in my tease a few minutes ago that I could explain why Obamacare is a disaster in a way that any idiot could understand it and do it in about 90 seconds. Now, maybe there's a little exaggeration. I can't do anything in 90 seconds. I could, but I don't show any self-restraint. I want to keep adding point upon point upon point upon point. But I'm going to try here because this is at the core of understanding what a disaster this is going to be for our country. However bad you think Obamacare is going to be, I am convinced 99% of Americans are minimizing it. It's way worse than even you think. No, I'm not going to run a timer on myself, but here's the short version of this. We all know that right now, government-paid insurance programs don't pay doctors and hospitals the full cost of the procedure. For example, let's suppose I go to Aurora Sinai and I have some medical procedure and I'm on Medicaid. The government on Medicaid will not pay the full cost of the procedure. On the other hand, if I'm going in there with private insurance... I will pay the full cost of the procedure or whatever my insurance company negotiated with the hospital. You can call it a hip replacement or whatever it is. Private insurance is charged more than the government reimburses for medical procedures. The same thing with Medicare. The government doesn't pay the full cost when it comes to Medicare. So what happens now when Obamacare kicks in and you have all these new government-run exchanges Way more people are going to be in health care programs directed by the government. You know doggone well that with our budget problems, the government's not going to pay the full cost of those procedures, meaning private insurance is going to have to go up even more to cover the losses that the providers will have. That means as private insurance becomes even more expensive, more employers will drop it, Sending even more people onto the health care exchanges run by the government, which aren't paying the full cost. Eventually, the gap will be so huge, everybody will be in an exchange. Yet the government isn't going to be paying the full cost for health care, so you'll now have this disaster of no private insurance left to make up the difference. And the government will be forced to actually pay the full cost of the care, which will explode the budget deficit way more than you could imagine. I don't know if that was 90 seconds, but you get the drift. And there's no way the scenario I describe isn't going to happen. Everybody knows it's going to happen. For those of you who couldn't follow it, and I said any idiot could follow it. I was being a little obnoxious in describing that. I'm going to walk through it again. Because this is irrefutable. This is what's going to happen. This is a disaster. Right now. You take a hospital like, and I mentioned Sinai. Sinai is the hospital operated by Aurora near the Marquette campus. They keep talking about closing it down. They've kept it open. A huge number of the people that go to Sinai have their care paid for by the government. Many of them are on Medicaid. Others Medicare, but Medicaid's the big problem. Medicaid is health insurance for poor people, people on welfare. The government pays it. Medicaid does not ever reimburse the full cost of the service. So the hospitals like Aurora, and in this case Sinai, they either lose their shirts at these facilities or they have to really jack up prices for the people that pay with private health insurance. Because the government simply says, well, we're not going to pay it. We're not going to pay the full cost of the procedure. They also make it impossible, almost impossible, to reject Medicaid patients through either guilt or laws. So we've had this cost shifting going on forever and ever and ever, and Obama even acknowledges, acknowledges it in his Obamacare proposal. The government simply decides how much it's going to pay for a procedure, and if that isn't enough to pay for it, The difference is made up by charging the rest of us, those of us that are not freeloading on the government, more. Well, now we go to Obamacare. For those handful of you who still don't know what Obamacare does, one of the things that Obamacare does in order to ensure, quote, all Americans 
It says that people who are not insured by a private health care plan and are not covered by Medicare or Medicaid, they will be put into these so-called exchanges. The exchanges would be managed by private sector insurance companies but run by the government. They're dictated under Obamacare, and Obamacare specifies all the things that they will do, and a government panel will decide all of the things that they will and won't cover, including what the rate of reimbursement's going to be. So now you've got this huge new area of insurance, the government exchanges. Absolutely guarantee you they're going to run the government exchanges, especially with this massive budget problem that Obama has created the same way they run Medicaid. They're not going to pay the full cost of the procedure. What's that going to do? When you now have all of these new people going into these exchanges and their health care is not paying the full cost of the procedure, it's going to drive up the cost of private insurance even more. The gap between private insurance and what it pays and what the exchanges pay will be enormous. This means the cost for the employer for private insurance soars. What happens to an employer who doesn't provide private insurance? They pay a fine and their employees go into the exchanges. As the cost of the private insurance explodes to make up for the difference that's created when the exchange is not paying the full cost of the procedure, more and more employers will drop their private insurance and their employees will go on to the exchanges. You'll have tens of millions of more people on the exchanges than Obama projects. Now even more on the exchanges, meaning that the gap in payment is even greater. I envision a point not long into Obamacare where more people will be on an exchange than in their regular health insurance and work because so many employers will be dropping it. So what remains of private health insurance now is going to have to raise its prices even more because all these other people are being under-reimbursed by the exchanges under Obamacare. Eventually, you get to the point of no return where there's virtually no private insurance left because the cost of it is so unaffordable that no employer can justify offering it when their employees can just go into the exchanges. Then, the government has no choice. It's got to pay the entire cost for the procedure. Or we won't have health care. The hospitals will shut down. The doctors will go out of practice if they're simply not going to be paid what the stuff costs. So now, the cost to government in paying for all of this health care explodes. Because, as I said, you know they're going to nickel and dime and underpay with the exchanges initially. But when the exchanges are the only thing that's out there, they're going to have to pay the whole full cost. And now you've got government paying for the entire cost of health care in the United States. We already have an unsustainable federal budget. We have a national debt of $16 trillion. We're running annual deficits of one4 and this disaster of Obamacare, where, where the government is going to be funding all these exchanges and paying the cost of the health care, that isn't even in place yet. There's no way I'm, going to, I'm wrong about how this is going to play out. A... A lot of employers are going to drop private sector health insurance because it won't be as important to them to offer it because the exchanges will be in place. Let me explain. Right now, if you run a company, 60 60 employees, why do you offer health insurance? Hard to get good employees if you don't offer it. So a lot of people just, they need to have health insurance so they're not going to take the job. But you can tell those employees, hey, you're just going to go out of the government exchange anyway. A lot of these employers are going to take a look at the government fine and the cost of the health insurance. They're just going to say, look, I'm better off paying the fine than I am offering the health insurance. So you'll have all these people in these exchanges. As I said, you know the exchanges won't pay the full full cost of any of these procedures. 
So the gap between what the government programs, including the exchanges pay, and what private insurance pays will become enormous, driving up the cost of private health insurance even more. Snowball effect occurs. More employers drop the private insurance. And the next year it gets worse and worse and worse, and eventually everybody's in the exchanges. There's no private health care left. And now because everybody's in the exchanges, all you have left are the exchanges, Medicaid, and Medicare. The government is now paying the cost of all health care in the United States. And we're a country that's already broken. We haven't even started this yet. Re-electing Obama to put in place Obamacare is the undoing of the United States. There's no way this can work without bankrupting the nation. None. The government of the United States does not have enough money to pay for all the health care for everybody in this country. We're already broke when we're not doing it. I was talking to somebody about this this morning. They said, how does everybody not get this? Well, I think not everybody thought it through. And as I said, it's not hard to think through. What I just described is not complicated. We have some things that some people in the audience are flummoxed over. They can't get it. They don't grasp it. Obamacare has a million components to it, but the part about the mandatory insurance and the exchanges is easy to explain. Now, the Obama people deny that this will happen. They say the exchanges will pay the full cost of the coverage of the procedure. That's what they say. But what they say and what will happen is obviously not true. If they intended to have the exchanges pay the full cost of the procedure, why aren't they having Medicaid pay the full cost of its procedures? With the pressure that the government is going to have on budgets, the ability to simply say, hey, we're only going to pay this much is overwhelming. You know the exchanges will underpay. And this will create this enormous gap which is going to make private health care insurance even more expensive as they have to overpay for their procedures to make up for the underpaying that's currently done by Medicaid and then the new exchanges that will be created. You think about things like this, and you realize that simple common sense, never mind liberal or conservative, simple common sense explains that this is not only not going to work, it's a disaster. It ends everything. We have right now several entitlements, Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. We can't pay them. We're busted out as a country. We've got a $16 trillion national debt that we're already having trouble paying off, even though interest rates are virtually zero. Wait till the 3%, 5%, 7%, 10%. Wait till we're paying 10% a year on a $16 trillion debt. It'll never get to 10%. Well, maybe not too soon, but it certainly can be at 5 or 6 That's historic. 30-year bond has been at 5 or 6% for many times in our history. And we don't even have Obamacare on the books exploding the deficit yet. This guy has managed to explode the deficit without Obamacare even fully being in effect. As I said, it's simple common sense to realize that this is a disaster. What I find is that there are a lot of people who get this. Who have this fully figured out, just as I described, because as I said, it's not all that hard to figure out. It's not really complicated. If an employer doesn't have to offer insurance anymore and have his workers covered, the employer can just say to the employee, hey, you're going to be covered. You're in the exchange. Many employers are going to drop their coverage because they can't justify it. Even more will drop it when the cost of their insurance explodes because their insurance is subsidizing the people that are on the exchanges. Eventually, there is no private health insurance. Everybody's on the exchanges. Healthcare is an entitlement. The government exchanges run everything, and we don't have anywhere near the money to pay for this. There's no way you could ever tax yourself out of it. It is a total disaster. It's the destruction of the American system as we know it. That's what Obamacare is going to do. 
And there's no way anybody can refute my point. What part of my point are you going to say isn't true? That nobody, no companies are going to drop private sector insurance? Hardly anybody will be on the exchanges. Really? That's what you think? If nobody's going to be on the exchanges, why are you creating them? We even know what the liberal dream is. Tammy Baldwin has said she supports a government takeover of health care. She wants everybody in the exchanges. It's their desire. They'll dictate every single term of the exchanges and ultimately they'll decide how much of the exchanges will reimburse for every medical procedure there is. And you know doggone well they'll underpay. You don't know that. What's Medicaid doing? Well, it's underpaying. Why wouldn't the exchanges do it? There's no answer, is there? Merely thinking about that is reason enough that Obama needs to be defeated. If for no other reason than to stop the disaster of Obamacare. And as I said, it's a disaster. What I just said was going to happen is undeniably going to happen. One of the things that would be nice if it could occur, and it isn't going to occur, is to force people to engage in what I just described. The remarkable cost shifting of the paying for health care away from the private sector and private individuals and private insurance over to doing it through it simply being another government entitlement program and how a country that is being busted out because of it's the entitlement programs we already have would take on one that is far bigger than any of them. This is going to be bigger than Social Security, bigger than Medicare. We can't pay for Medicare. That's just paying for health care for people 65 and up. This is going to be paying for health care for everybody. I haven't even added in one of the worst components of it. If you know anything about people on Medicaid, it's that they go to the doctor all the time. Go to the doctor's office. You see people that are in there every time they need to have their toenails clipped. Why? Because they don't have to pay anything for it. Medicaid is paid for by the government. Most of us on the private sector, you've got to get cancer now in order to eat up your annual deductible. I haven't eaten up mine. I almost think I should try. Got to do this long enough. Insurance will pay for something. Not that it pays for nothing. There's negotiated rates on the drugs and all of that stuff. Still, when everybody gets into these exchanges, what's going to be the disincentive to not overuse the system? To not go into the doctor and run into the emergency room every time something is wrong? The incentive not to do it right now is that you're usually paying out of your own pocket when it's private insurance, but that's not going to be the case when these exchanges are going to be set up. You know doggone well that they will be biased toward getting everybody all the care that they want to have. I think I will toss this out to the audience. I hope this is sinking in because the scenario that I described of what's going to happen, I think is almost uh, almost unarguable. To Dale in Whitefish Bay, you're on News Talk 1130 WISN. Mark, you're right. It's going to ruin the country because they'll tax or find other sources of funds as, as, to the greatest extent possible. But it won't even be close to sufficient. That, that's the point. They, there is no way you could ever come up with enough tax to generate that money. You can take, for example, the net worth of all Americans that's out there. What are we going to do? Literally have nobody left with any money? Once this situation becomes entirely government run, it's way worse than what happens in other countries like Canada or Britain. In countries like Canada, where they do have a government pays for everything situation over there, their costs aren't as high because because you've got this huge number of people who come to the United States and get their health care here. Uh, the United States subsidizes a lot of this. If you're somebody in Britain who has a serious medical condition, many of those people come to the United States for the esoteric radical procedures. You know, the Mayo Clinic and all these, the Cleveland Clinic, MB Anderson, these are filled with a lot of foreign people that are paying their own way to be on this. So the United States and our system here has helped carry these countries and the rest of the world. There's nobody, though, to carry carry us. 
Where is the fallback for us once we decide that we're going to take on this entire system that we have? And also, we're accustomed to a certain level of care. The only way you could come up with a way not to pay for this is to so radically scale back the kind of coverage that we have. And this is where the rationing comes in as it comes in in every other nation. We're only going to do so many heart transplants a year. We're only going to do so many stand implants. We're only going to do so many breast cancer surgeries because we can't afford to pay for all of them. It's the undoing of everything. And I just think that it hasn't dawned on people how bad it's going to be and how obvious it is that you're going to see most companies drop their private health insurance. If everybody, every company that has private health insurance now keeps it, you could make the case that Obamacare is going to work. The argument I'm trying to make is why would they keep it when they're going to be paying so much more than if they could simply drop it and pay the fine? Well, and, and so you hit precisely the point that I wanted to add, the, the one part of the story that I wanted to add, and that is that rationing is how they bridge the gap in many respects. So if you're 80, if your mother's 80 and she needs a hip replacement, she's not going to qualify. Do you understand they, how much rationing they'd have to do? Oh, we already well, have a $16 trillion federal budget deficit, and this is during his paltry little recovery here, during small interest rates. When, what happens when the deficit gets to be $25 trillion, excuse me, the debt gets to be $25 trillion or $30 trillion, and interest rates are now 5% a year, so you're paying 5% on a $30 trillion debt, and you're losing your, you're losing your shirt on Obamacare. Any way you look at these, these numbers are way more frightening than I think most people are even aware of because people haven't thought through how bad bad it's going to be. I'm trying to force people to confront the reality of what's going to occur once the Obamacare health care exchanges are created. These are the default things that Obamacare creates to ensure that every American is part of health insurance. A, you're required to join one if you don't get insurance from your employer. You're fined if you don't do it. On the other hand, if you're an employer with more than 50 people, you must provide health insurance or you must pay the assessment to the government for the purpose of running the exchanges. I am arguing, and you can attack the premise if you want, that the exchanges will not pay the full cost of the medical procedures that they're covering. That in order to make the numbers not explode, the government will have the exchanges pay less than the cost of providing the procedure will be. I base this on the fact that that's exactly what they're doing right now with Medicare and Medicaid. They're underpaying for the cost of those procedures, with the cost being shifted to private insurance. The exchanges, though, add millions, millions, millions more whose insurance is underpaying, the insurance being the exchanges, creating the gap between the cost of private health insurance and the exchanges of what they're paying even greater. This explodes the cost of private health care insurance and creates a huge snowball effect in the number of employers that will offer it. Gets reduced to nothing. They'll all simply pay the assessment rather than pay the incredible cost of this. Voila, everybody's now in the exchanges. That means the government is now responsible for all health care bills. There's nothing left to, cost, sh- to shift any cost to. We're done. And I just think... But that explanation is so simple that everyone should be able to understand, yet I think almost nobody confronts it, nobody focuses on it. This is an entitlement that we can't pay for. We can't even pay for Social Security and Medicare. How are we ever going to do this? To John and Fond du Lac, you're on News Talk 1130 WISN. Thank you, Mark. You've done an excellent job from my experience in hospital administration of explaining this. Uh, and the fact of the matter also is that if hospitals and the other providers have to have, have an increase in the number of patients and on discounted care, which is what you're saying, or uncompensated care, they, have such a, they don't have another way to make up that difference with insurance like you've mentioned, so they're going to take it in, in the shins. Or, be, the, or, or they simply can't operate. The government well, realizes we have to have hospitals, so they're going to have to somehow figure out a way to increase the payment. Now, in other countries, this leads to rationing, but I don't even think you could ration it and make it work because the amount of money that, you, you know, we'd have to restrict so many procedures to the point that you'd have social upheaval in this country. In the end, it's just not going to work, and the whole thing is going to have to be blown up, but our country 
may be crushed in the interim. I'm saying just start using our heads, figure out that this is what's going to happen. Don't do it. And the only way, as the Supreme Court has made clear, that we cannot do it is you've got to get Obama out of office and replace him with somebody else. Exactly right. And obviously, the health care system can't survive by uh, the total mass receiving discounted care because it will then end up in hospital saying, sorry, so long, will only serve those that have insurance. That's correct. If everybody and, is discounted, there's nowhere to get the money from to pay for the additional cost. And you don't right. have any, therefore, you end up with nowhere near enough money to provide the American health care system. The current yep. system's a racket with private health insurance subsidizing the people who are being underpaid for by the government for Medicare and Medicaid. But when you now turn this where 50%, 60%, 80% are the people that are underpaid, it quickly ends all private health insurance because employers would not be able to afford the premiums that are subsidizing this unbelievable cost shifting that's gone on. And the reason the Obamacare numbers don't reflect this is that they say that the exchanges will pay the full cost of the medical procedures. And everybody knows that isn't the case because if that's what they were going to do, we'd be doing that now with Medicaid, wouldn't we? Yeah, it's a lie. And, uh, it's a lie. That's all it is. It can absorb maybe 20% discounted care, but beyond that, uh, they can't overcharge health insurance to the point where it becomes ludicrous. Uh, and so they'll either... Because nobody will take it. And the oh, shifting no. will be worse now because you've got this new group, the exchanges, where you see, now have three sets of people that are under being underpaid That's for. Right. Medicare, Medicaid, and the exchanges. So the burden on the private insurance is even greater. And then, as more people in the following year drop the private insurance to go to the exchanges, even fewer remaining private insurers, so their costs have to go even more. Yeah. It's exactly. just, it's, you can see it coming from a mile away. Uh, you're, you've explained it as a hospital administrator would explain it, but I'm surprised that hospitals and the medical profession hasn't raised up more noise on this whole thing. I just think that there's a lot of delusion going on here. Yeah. But, well, it can't destroy our country. We've never destroyed our country. We even had a civil war and we survived that. It can't destroy our country. Well, figure it out and tell me how it isn't going to destroy our country, how it isn't going to destroy the entire budget. You shouldn't do this if we were starting with a surplus right now. We've got a $16 trillion national debt, massive annual deficits, and he wants to take all of this on. Thank you for the call. It's the end. However you want to sugar, and I'm not saying it's the end in a year, but it will be the end. Remember also, even if you think that the exchanges will pay close to the full rate of the care, look at the number of people that are moving on to Medicare. Medicare's costs are going to keep exploding as well. Congressman Ryan has a good plan that Mitt Romney doesn't want to talk about anymore. Preserve Medicare for the people that are on it. Change Medicare to a private health insurance run plan in the future. And get rid of Obamacare. Instead, Obama wants to create a vision where everybody in America is ultimately going to be getting insurance from one program controlled by one way or another by the government. Either Medicaid, Medicare, or the exchanges. He keeps saying you can keep your private insurance, but you can't keep it if none of the employers offer it. Unless you're a company that needs to have the most skilled employees imaginable and therefore tremendous health care is a benefit. They're all going to drop it. I look at us here. Why wouldn't they drop it? Why wouldn't they just dump us into the exchanges? Why wouldn't everyone do that? Can save money. You don't have to deal with the the hassle of offering these huge benefit programs. Why wouldn't they do it? And once all these people are on the exchanges, their care is going to be underpaid for by the government because that's what the government does. Mequon and Matt, you're on News Talk 1130 WISN. Hey, Mark, you really hit the nail on the head here. Um, one of the things that I wanted to mention is that the once all these people are going onto these exchanges and are underpaying for the services, doctors are simply just going to stop practicing and... As a result, there's going to be less doctors, and there's going to be, it's going to lead to rationing of care, which is... The rationing of care is inevitable, and I think that level of rationing is way worse than anybody thinks because the gap yeah. between what we have to pay for health insurance and what the government can generate through taxes is enormous. Exactly. It's, it's really, it really is unbelievable. 
And, you know, I'm 20 years old, and I don't really have the best understanding of this anyway, but, you know, I have to pay for asthma medication, and that stuff even in and of itself is pretty expensive. So who knows how much that crap is going to cost, you know, in, well, in it, the it, future. Uh, do you uh, you have coverage through your parents or who, what kind yeah, of insurance? Yeah, it? it's, it's coverage through my hey, parents. Okay, and do I, your parents have a private sector plan? Yes, they do. Then I guarantee you the cost that that insurance company is getting for your asthma medication is higher than if you were on Medicaid. And they were right. paying for this. And that's the way the thing works because Medicaid just underpays. The health providers have to overcharge for the private insurance. But now that we've got this new option that Obama is creating, these exchanges, you're just going to see a lot of people that are currently on private insurance now into the exchanges. And I guarantee you this the same level of underpayment is going to go on. Thanks for the call. If they actually fully pay it, the cost of Obamacare is way greater than Obama is claiming. Remember, in his thing, he says we're going to save all this money because the exchanges are going to use their buying power to lower the cost of care. That's what Obamacare is premised on. What does that mean? In other words, they're admitting we're going to underpay. We're just magically going to underpay and think everything's going to work out. I'm telling you, there's more at stake here than most people realize. And if you throw this out to someone, well, that's not what's going to happen. Obama says that's not what's going to happen. Think it through. Use the, the brain that God gave you. How is what I describe not inevitable? How is the likelihood that many private employers will drop their coverage and put people on the exchanges and just pay the assessment of the government not likely? How is it not likely that the exchanges won't underpay for their coverage for the cost of the care, given that Obama himself says that they're going to be paying less than we're currently paying because they believe that all this economizing that we'll do is going to magically lower costs. That magic in there is the problem. The magic doesn't exist. If there was a way to dramatically lower the cost, we would have already dramatically lowered the cost. As it is, private health care insurers, are try, they fight the doctors and the hospitals every day on how much you're going to reimburse for something. You want a new hip, the hospital wants to charge this. The high, private insurer says that. That's already going on. But somewhere, somebody has to come up with enough money to pay the doctor, to pay the insurance, to pay the nurses, to pay the hospitals, to pay the company that manufactures the hip, to pay their insurers, to pay their labor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And when all of that burden is put on the government of the United States, there's no way this government can ever generate that kind of money. We don't have that kind of money in this country. News Talk 1130 WISN, Mark Belling, late afternoon show. I am of the strong opinion that the overwhelming majority of Americans, including those who oppose Obamacare, have not thought through the basic flaw in the whole thing. And that is, if you're going to come up with a way that every American is covered, and you're going to do that by having a brand new thing, these exchanges, and if the government in the end is responsible for funding those exchanges, which of course they will be because they're creating them, they're not going to pay the full cost of the medical procedure because government never pays the full cost of this stuff. If they do pay the full cost... Well, then we're busted out anyway if we try to have taxes pay the entire cost of American health care. What is going to happen as these exchanges are created is that the exchanges are going to underpay for the coverage, underpay for the treatments that are being provided, putting even more burden on private insurance, thus leading itself to everybody dropping private insurance. Now we're all on the exchanges. You can argue that I don't know that's going, what's going to happen. I don't know how you can disagree with my conclusion, though, that that is going to happen. How is what I described somehow magically not going to happen? Every one of us now probably knows an employer who's going to drop private health insurance once Obamacare kicks in. Many of them are going to be glad just to be done with the hassle, never mind the cost. Obama says that the exchanges are self-funded only when he comes up with his funny numbers, as Senator Johnson keeps pointing out. They say, well, the exchanges won't have to pay as much as private insurance because the exchanges will use their power and pressure to lobby for lower rates. In other words, what I'm describing, they're just going to underpay.
Somebody's got to pay for that AIDS medication. Somebody's got to pay for the prednisone. Somebody's got to pay for the foot amputation. All this stuff is unbelievably expensive. And when there's nobody left to shift the cost to because you've driven private health insurance into the ground by creating Obamacare, you've now put the entire burden on the government of the United States and there's, as I said, no way that it could ever tax its way to having enough money to pay for that. It's the ruination of the whole thing. To Nancy and Wauwatosa, you're on News Talk 1130 WISN. And, Mark, it gets even worse. With the, I heard one estimate that your average do, face time with your doctor is going to average about two minutes. With the doctors having to see so many patients and being so underpaid, they're going to be dropping out of the system like flies. They're already dropping out. I'm not even talking about the fact we won't have any health care anymore. I'm saying we won't have a country that pays for any of this stuff. I think it's just a given that the quality of health care is going to fall apart. Even in countries that can lean on us, like England and Canada, where so many people come here for care, you've got to wait months and months and months to see a doctor, and the quality of the care is, in many cases, absolutely terrible. Here, it's going to be worse. We're t- I'm talking about not even having a country anymore with an economic system that functions because we've had we bankrupted ourselves i'm talking about defaulting on our bonds defaulting on our bonds creates the the, the a, a depression 10 times worse than the last great depression wipes out everything all the banks would fail because they all hold tons of bonds nothing adds up anymore the entire world now sees the united states no longer as the safest place to put their money but a country in which all of the assets are some are suddenly virtually worthless all of that's in front of us if we go and continue this reckless ban- path of spending money that we don't have have we are in deep deep trouble even if we don't do obamacare imagine if we do it about romney he has done a terrible job in explaining this he keeps saying we're going to replace obamacare he never says with what Because it all then comes back to his thing. When he tries to bring it up during the debates, Obama's going to change the subject and say, well, how is this different from what you tried to do in Massachusetts, Mitt? Mitt doesn't want to point out that the system becomes self-bankrupting because he's got his own hands on this. This is why I wish he would have just admitted that what he did in Massachusetts was a mistake so that he wouldn't have this around his neck. As a result, though, because Romney can't fully explain, and I think Romney knows Obamacare kills us. Romney's not an idiot, just as I think Romney knows that what he did in Massachusetts didn't work. But he's lost the ability to explain it, and therefore, you don't have a lot of people in the country having, everybody's, well, this election at least will be a referendum on Obamacare, do we want it or not? And I think for most people, they haven't fully thought through what exactly is going to occur. Once these exchanges come in place and underpay for it, how many Americans even know that right now, Medicaid underpays? Do people even know that low-income people who are on Medicaid, that they Payment that is made by the government to the hospitals and the doctors for their treatment is way less than you're being paid, than you're paying when you're, be, when you're seen by the doctor. I don't think people know that. It is a huge problem in American health care. It's one of the reasons health insurance is so expensive. Government's underpaying. Government's broke now and we're underpaying. Well, you're alarming us. People need to be alarmed here. There is a way out. If Romney wins and the Republicans get the Senate, they can repeal Obamacare. We'll have to figure out what to do then, but there is a way out of this nightmare. Well, but that's the only way out that I see. If Obama wins, I see no scenario to get rid of Obamacare. None. Well, what if they voted out? He'll veto it. We're stuck with it. It'll be in place. It'll start to happen, and it's going to be an almost irreversible problem. We can't even reform Medicare. Imagine when this becomes the health care for every single American. And if we reelect him, we will have done it to ourselves. 